Hi everyone, welcome to back to Casual Watch Talk on a Tuesday and I've got a couple of special guests with me. I've got Marco from Luxury Bazaar. Thanks for joining us, Marco. Hey, thanks for and, having me. Yeah, and I've got Patrick from Pocket Watch Time. Thanks for joining us, Patrick. Hey, everybody. Uh, we, might be, we might be having another late comer to this as well, but uh, well, let's do the wristwatch check. So, Patrick, do you want to kick us off with uh, what, you're, what you're wearing? Well, I'm uh, I'm rocking my uh, my Panerai Tantalum Pam 172. Ooh, so, first time uh, on the stream. Oh, really? Okay, but yeah, I, I I wore it the other day to work, and I, I I haven't put it on the wrist in a while, so it's just such a fun watch. I just uh, I really enjoy it. Uh, what I was sort of rocking all week, though, I've been rocking my brand new uh, Sun. Woo, coming up. <laughs> But uh, you know, went to Orlando or went to New York this uh, last week, and uh, was fortunate enough to then walk into a Swatch boutique. So I was able to pick that up and immediately put it on a nice rubber strap because the included one is hot garbage. Yeah. But uh, you know, it's actually a really fun watch to wear, and I kind of wish Todd uh, Seiko Todd was here so that he could uh, burn me a little bit because he knows how much I actually hate the uh, the Omega Speedmaster. So for me to actually like a Moon Swatch. I mean, maybe maybe I'm converting. Yeah. It, it, well, uh, more interestingly, is that your tantalum watch? Is that the yes. natural color? Is that its natural color? Or uh, yeah. that's not PVD coated. That's what it natu naturally is. Like a yeah, it's natural color is sort of this, a bit of sort of a purpley blue hue. It looks really good when it's brushed. When they, uh, when they polish it, it actually kind of loses some of the blue purple. And it looks a little bit more like steel. But, uh, but yeah, it's... That's what makes it so fun is that that dark color and just so rare that there's so few watches that do it. The new Gronefeld is probably one of my favorite watches on the planet, but a little bit high on the price tag. So my wife will kill me if I ever buy that watch. <laughs> uh, Marco, you're up next. What are you wearing? Yeah, I'm wearing a recent acquisition, at least like somewhat recent. It's been, I want to say like a couple of months now at this point. It's... Um, Small brand, one that we'll talk about in a little bit called Schwarz Etienne. It's the Roma Synergy uh, that was done in collaboration with Kari Budelainen. Mm -hmm. And it's the blue dial. I got it on an Aaron Bespoke leather strap. And this basically hasn't left my wrist since I got it. I absolutely love it. It's time only. It's got a wonderful dial. Movement is spectacular. And yeah, just love this watch. Awesome, awesome, and everybody can guess what I'm wearing because I've only got two watches left now. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm wearing my my green dial date just with its little rubber B strap on, going going all in on the green. Um, yeah, I, I really love this, and and the, the my review did really well. So thanks everyone for supporting the the review. I'm at nearly thirty thousand views now in like three, four, four or five days. So very much appreciate nice. everyone to watch. Yeah. Um, well, it should be a fun show. I, I did a very clickbait title, so I, 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 these you might know some of these brands, but we're going to have fun fun with this anyway. And so I'm going to I'm going to kick this off because it's my show. Uh, <laughs> um, I picked one that you might not know, but you need to know. I've picked Favre Luba, and this is a very distinctive dive watch brand. Um, they're actually very old. I think they're one of the oldest. I think um, actually, Mark, you might have said that it's it's one of the commenters might have said it's the uh, yeah Favre uh watch, the second oldest in the world. And I believe that because they actually started in seventeen eighteen was when they first started making watches. Obviously, pocket watches. Uh, what they're famous for is these. Well, the harpoon is one of the ones that they that they're um, famous for and as you can see they're like quite extreme dive watches so on this one here you've got like the hour hand is tiny and then the minute hand so they're they're really concentrated on diving and they were the first to ever make a watch that could um show alt altimeter and barometer on it so you could actually test uh, air pressure and get altitude from it and um, so mountaineers would wear it and then they also made a dive watch that was one of the first dive watches to show the time and also the depth. And this was like in the 60s. So there's actually a lot of technical innovations that they've had over the years. And I don't think that they're talked about that much. I mean, they're using Salita movements here, but that was my first pick. I don't know, 
Has anybody else heard of this? Patrick, have you heard of it? No, actually, this is a new one to me. Oh, yeah. there you go. Not oh, a brand that's very known to me either, so brand new to me also. Yeah, they um, it, it's they're really. I mean, they're they're very just. Dist- they do make some actually that aren't that are like standard looking. So they've got this uh, the chief chronograph here. So that's quite a nice looking um, chronograph watch there. So they do do a different ones. Typically, they're they're larger sizes. They're really known for their their dive watches as well. So that was my that was my first pick. So let's just remove it off there, and then next pick. Patrick, I'm going to go with you on this one. And this is Oaks and Junior. Yeah. Well, I'll apologize in advance for some of mine. They might not be that obscure because I was working this weekend. So I guess when we were doing the brainstorming of, uh, of watch brands, somewhere on the uh, the possibilities was doing some like innovative designs. So some of mine, you might say, well, gosh, that's not really that unheard of. But for some people, it might still be. But, uh, but so I added this one on at the last minute because, you know, Oaks and Junior, I can't really say that their design is that innovative, but I really just like their watches. So, you know, the, the theory behind it is uh, Dr. Oaksland, who works for Ulysse Narden, he kind of was in the production of, the, the, of this watch and I would almost say piggybacking off the MIH watch. And so for the people who know the MIH watch, it was kind of a really fun annual calendar that was made out of a uh, Valjoux 7750 movement. And he kind of then went in his own realm after that and made a watch that looks very familiar to it, but threw in some really fun complications. And some of them are moon phases, which are extremely accurate moon phases. But the one that I really like is their perpetual calendar. So their perpetual calendar actually has a, uh, a Ulysse Narden e Bausch movement base. And then they put a, uh, a pretty much a module on there. And I think for this one, I think the annual calendar is only five pieces. And I think the, the pieces for the perpetual, I mean, it's not more than a dozen pieces to make it a perpetual, which uh, is just absolutely absurd that they can do it that simply. And I just love the raw finish. It's a really great little brand. They'll do bespoke options for you. I actually reached out to them and asked them if they'd make me a tantalum one. And they would, but the the price tag got a little bit exorbitant. So I, I at least put it on pause. Maybe uh, maybe I'll contact them again. And, you know, who knows? Maybe they'll give me a pocket watch time discount. <laughs> um, I'm not familiar with this brand, really. Mark, have you heard of? this brand yeah i've seen some of their watches um they have like i want to call like almost a industrial like architectural kind of design to them feel to them um i i like them a lot quality is is very good um i, I mean listen they're very unique design wise right there there's not really much else that is kind of like this um in terms of dial layout even in terms of uh the way that they ultimately do their watches i like it a lot i think it's it's something a little off the beaten path which is nice and it looks almost like wood, doesn't it, that they've made it from, yeah. but it's just a, a very deep brushing mm-hmm. metal. Their, their big thing is, which, of course, is what sort of intrigues me a bit, they, they like to play with metallurgy and uh, patina finishes. So everything is pretty much a raw metal, except, you know, you can get the hands and the markers painted. And, you know, the, that little sun on that sun and moon phase you know, it's a little piece of gold and, you know, the, the moon is usually a little piece of, you know, silver or platinum. And, you know, they really just uh, go all out to sort of make their overall finish pretty, pretty nice. So, yeah, it's a great little brand. And, you know, I think the entire company is about seven people. And, you know, you when you email them, pretty much the, the manager chief, you know, is the one who responds back to you. And, you know, it's really kind of fun to be such a small independent. Yeah, and, and and where where are they based? Are they Swiss? Or they're Swiss. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, awesome. Yeah, because that definitely looks like wood, doesn't it? But uh, yeah, that's so that's another cool one. Next up, we've got. I believe this is one of yours, Marco. Yes. So I chose. I wanted to choose like kind of watches in I guess three kind of different categories. One I would say like kind of more affordable. Second being maybe a little more expensive, and third being like really expensive. Um, so this is kind of, I guess, the more affordable option. This is from a brand called Ophion. Uh, they make, I think, really nice, very interesting watches. Um, they source their cases actually from 
uh, the company of Budalainen and Katan, if I'm not mistaken, is the name, uh, which is kind of Kari Budalainen's uh, case company. Uh, they do really nice dial work. Um, I know they are CNC, but they're pretty, you know, uh, they're pretty kind of outright. And, and they basically explain uh, the whole process of manufacturing and, you know, what you're buying with them. And actually, their movements are really nice as well. They're modified techno time movements, uh, which are hand hammered and uh, they kind of skeletonize it and modify it a lot. So you can see a lot more of the movement itself. And they make it in a variety of finishes. Uh, you can get kind of brush styles. Uh, you can get even uh, the, the Gioche ones that, that you're seeing there. And overall, I mean, the price quality ratio, uh, I think, is is really spectacular, right? You're, you're getting a lot of watch overall for the money, considering, you know, the movement, considering who makes the case. And also just the overall look to it, right? I think it's just a good looking watch. It's just a solidly built, good looking watch for the price. What is the price point? I think roughly you can get these for the sub three, even, I mean, they might have like sub 5,000, but I think mo for the most part, you can get them sub 3,000. Uh, yeah, pretty, I mean, pretty that, that's a gorgeous movement. I mean, that movement's yeah. just so, yeah. so fun. I like this 70% Swiss, 30% German. They, they, they yeah, no, they're, they're pretty, they're, that's one thing that they take like a lot of attention to come kind of in the same style that Habring, for example does right where they they're kind of open in terms of where they source their movement parts what their movement is and, and what have you they're very much focused in that same kind of way uh focused on you know being very transparent with respect to how their watches are made and where they get everything from which is nice it's a breath of fresh air yeah, I love that that three dimensional dial. The way that the numbers are so precisely cut out. Um, yeah, you said that they use CNC machines to later. Yeah, so so the dial itself is not uh, guilloche. It's it's CNC guilloche, if you will. So it's yep. it's kind of I guess lasered out, or I'm not sure what the process is exactly. Uh, maybe it's printed out. But apparently, the even the method that they use is a little different than most kind of CNC guilloche type of dials where the, the depth of it is a little bit better. So it looks even closer to real kind of Rose engine turned guilloche, which is, I mean, it's very impressive considering, you know, the, the price, the level of quality is, is super high in these. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is a new one on me, but they are um, spectacular, aren't they? Uh, it's, it's kind of that simplicity done to perfection, uh, yeah. which is, which is awesome. Yeah. yeah. The extensive I... use to CNC milling. I was gonna say I knew the brand. I just didn't know the price point was so low because seeing them around, I would have thought their price would have been double, if not triple, that. So that's impressive. Yeah, yeah. I wonder if they've I wonder if they've got like a price breakdown of this particular model at the end of the article. Whoops, sorry to giving oh, everyone nice. a motion sickness. No, um, oh yeah, look, yeah, you're right. Gilleshe dial three thousand one hundred and fifty euro. So yeah, probably. Yeah, three thousand seven hundred, four thousand dollars for the Gilleshe dial, and then a lot less for the brush one. That's a that's incredible price. Yeah, yeah. and you, these could probably be had. I mean, on eBay or Corona Twenty Four. I'm assuming there must be some for sale out there, or I've seen them. Even you know, I saw one maybe a year ago for like twenty five hundred dollar range. Again, I think for for the price, it's a phenomenal watch. Uh -huh. Yeah, awesome. My next one, I've gone for something a bit left field here because this is a familiar name, but I know I originally knew it from uh, colognes or aftershaves, and this is uh, Izzy Mayaki. Um, so it, it, they, they definitely make like eau de toilet and stuff like that. But I, I got a book which was called the fifty most something like the fifty most watches that changed the world or something, and they actually had a, an Izzy Mayaki watch on talking about uh, how it how it was so innovative so i was absolutely intrigued into it and it actually is a very interesting looking watch and it's uh, this trapezoid one so it actually has the uh, the tachymeter around the you see that sort of around the outer bezel here it's quartz movement but it's extremely um you know extremely well designed sort of highly functional uh, watch and uh, I've been tempted on more than one occasion about picking one up. I just don't know whether I could pull it off. They they actually do it in this one's a I think a sort of gunmetal finish, but they do it in. Um, I think you can get it in black. I think they've done a, a red and and all sorts of different colors. But actually, most of their watches are quite sort of playful. I mean, some of them do look like fashion brands. There's no doubt about it. But some of them are quite interesting, like this this one that's set. Uh, 
in perspex but yeah the, the one that made the book which was quite a feat actually because it, the other things were like you know there was a submariner in there there was actually an apple watch as well but this uh to make that book the top 50 watches that changed the world and this it, it this was said it was just because it was such a unique design so i had to sneak this one in here i don't know if anybody else is familiar with these uh it's a bit left field this one but does anybody know the uh the brand in general do you know mm -hmm. Yeah, I've seen this yeah. one before. Yeah, I've heard of them. Uh, I can't say I know particularly a lot, but yeah, I've heard of them. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's funny because they I wore I for years wore their. Uh, it's not really clone. It's like eau de toilet. It's got a re it's a really nice smelling um, sort of uh, aftershave or eau de toilet. Uh, yeah, so there's mine, Izumayaki. Uh, let us know in the comments if you've heard of have heard of this brand before, or or if there's anything that's uh, piqued your interest here. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, actually, you're getting a shout out, Marco. Good to see Marco here. <laughs> Love your show, Luxury Bazaar. Yes. Yeah. You're making some great content. You're such a good addition to uh, the Grey Market channel over there. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Uh, next up, Patrick, this is your, what of yours? Mm -hmm. So, this is a, a very independent guy over in Oregon, and uh, Keaton Myrick, and he just makes some really mm -hmm. fun you know, individual customized watches, very, very low production counts. And I just, it, he, I don't know his whole in-houseness, but he claims that these are all made in-house. I don't know if he's kind of has some form of an ebouch that he obviously super customizes or if he actually, you know, makes all these plates and, and, you know, stuff individually. I, I don't really know, but he, he claims it to be an in-house caliber. And I just think it's really neat with the just giant, almost single bridge. You know, obviously as a pocket watch fanboy, it, it kind of looks like an old 18 size pocket watch and, you know, really just kind of is, is an intriguing option. I, I love just the, the detail he does on the, the winding wheels. And my only downside is he's got a, a Garrick style seconds hand on a lot of his watch and, uh, and I just don't really care for that that cross second hand. But the the good news is they're all customizable, and he'll pretty much do whatever you want him to. So if you order one, I guess you can choose to either have it or not have it. But a lot of his I see with it, and I that's that's the one eyesore. But otherwise, they're just strikingly gorgeous to me. Are they? Are they very expensive? Are they if they're like one off? Are they? Um, they're they're cheaper than you would think. I mean, I, I think they pretty much are around like the fifteen thousand to, to twenty thousand mark. So I mean, for being virtual one off, you know, independence. I mean, that's a it's a pretty inexpensive bespoke watch because he he pretty much makes them individually, and I think now he's in whichever caliber he's doing, he's doing a, a series of thirty. And so when you look at his uh, his drop down menus, you can actually like click on, let's say, number four of 30 and then it locks you out because you can only see it if you're that purchaser. And then you can like log in to see your production. So oh, pretty wow. neat that you can sort of see the individual steps of your watch's creation. But he definitely, you know, is a a small, small brand. But I follow him on Instagram, and he's also just seems like a pretty young, normal guy. He takes pictures of him and his either wife or girlfriend, and they'll go out hiking. And as I said, he just he just looks like a cool guy who makes watches. So I think that's just a really great combo. And this is are they, is he U.S. based? Yeah, he's uh, he's based in Oregon. Oh, oh, sorry, you did say that. Sorry. Um, uh, yeah, so Mark Wheeler saying you, you, that you caught him totally left field with that one. Marco, have you heard of this brand before? Yeah, he's actually a great guy. I've spoken to him a few times on Instagram. Actually, if you reach out to him on Instagram, you could probably get him on a live stream. Um, when, back when I was I was actually doing YouTube more prominently, uh, I actually wanted to have him on because he was he was viewing. I didn't even know how he found my channel, but he was actually in the in the YouTube live show comments, kind of explaining to him mm -hmm. us how he makes his watches. And he's really a great guy. We tried to kind of set something up, but it just didn't work out timing wise for him and us. Um, but yeah, he uses, if I'm not mistaken, a very highly modified unit toss movement. And it, he, he truly makes everything kind of in-house, so to speak. Everything is really done by him. It's super labor intensive as, as you can see. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, his, his watches definitely have a very distinct design. They almost remind me of like, 
Peter Speak Marine. I don't know if you guys have heard of the brand, but it's yeah. like at least in the case, it's like very much an officer style case. Um, but yeah, I, I think his watches are phenomenal, great value, and super well made. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, that that speak uh, speak one is the it spelt the same as my second name, so that's <laughs> I just could never afford one. Um, so uh, next up, Mark, I believe this is one of yours. Yeah, so this is probably going to be one of the. It's going to be probably one of the most expensive of the picks, and uh, right. certainly the expensive one on the list. His name is Remy Cools. He's a very small uh, kind of upstart independent watchmaker who really rose to prominence. Uh, because he won a competition. So he won Jorn's kind of uh, young watchmaker competition. And from there, he actually launched his watch brand uh, and has released his, his kind of first watch, which if I'm not mistaken, is either completely sold out or already waitlisted. Um, and it, it's basically a kind of tourbillon watch, very much inspired by the time of Abraham Louis Breguet. I think, you know, that that's kind of very clear very much has a pocket watch type of aesthetic is even in a crownless case and you wind it through the case back. Um, there's actually two functions, uh, two, two kind of levers that you can pull to set the time and set to end wind the watch. And I mean, it's the level of quality here is, is outstanding. It's such an insane watch, but super expensive. If I'm not mistaken, these will run you about 160,000, which is, mm. that's a, that's a, a lot of money, but it's fun to kind of see these very young. I think he's like maybe 20 or 21, something like that. Uh, young, super talented watchmakers uh, kind of see what they're doing, right? Going out on their own, something that we haven't really seen. And uh, I was speaking to Max Buser about this, who's actually pretty close with him. Um, he was speaking about um, kind of th this, this idea that young watchmakers are going out on their own and starting their own brands. And we've never really... Uh, seen something like this for a long time and Remy himself is is apparently a great guy and his watches are super super well done yeah that's uh, that method you can see on the back quite yep. clearly there where you lift up the levers and then wind it that way Patrick is this one that you've you you've, you're familiar with no I've never seen this that uh that winding system is really neat I like it it's pretty cool yeah it's a very interesting watch um Listen, it's not one I will be able to afford uh, probably at any point in my lifetime or, you know, there's a lot of other watch I want to get before this. But I think it's just interesting to showcase like young watchmakers uh, kind of, you know, maybe finding a Rex, Rex Hepperseppi before he becomes Rex Hep, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I like the way that the um, the the dial um Rehalt the internal rehalt there looks like it's suspended from this one screw, and then the the tourbillon looks like it's suspended from that one screw as well. Um, yeah. is that a tourbillon actually, or is it just the? It is, oh, yeah, it is a yeah. tourbillon. Huh. <laughs> yeah, that's that's amazing, isn't it? Really, uh, really special. It's like yeah. a good use of the dome, unlike uh, some of the Jacob and Co stuff. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> There's not a little tiny piano in there. Um, awesome. Well, I, I well we've got most expensive, and I'm going to take it right down to the the most yeah, cost good. effective. And I've gone for Braun watches, which we all know Braun for their uh, excellent electric shavers and uh, and radios and stuff like that. But you can actually get these on Amazon. But I wasn't aware for a long time that they they created watches as well, and they've just I love the fact this this Bauhaus, you know, German simplicity watches, highly functional, very cost effective. I don't think they actually do um, mechanical watches, mainly quartz, but they're most known for this um, this chronograph here. But it just I've, I've always been a big fan. I've never pulled the trigger on one. I, I might be talking myself into it now, to be honest. But um, yeah, a big fan of this sort of this simplicity of design, uh, you know, simple but done excellently. Uh, I'll, I, I even I know there's other brands that do this as well, but you can tell that there's obviously a lot of uh, efforts gone into their uh, design. And of course, you know, there's that there's that stage in Apple's career where you could argue that uh, Johnny Ives was took a lot of his designs from early Braun radios and stuff like that when they were designing the iPod. So still there. Uh, important designs that they're actually producing so is anybody else aware that of these watches i'm aware of the shavers but yeah i i 
I don't think I could make myself buy it just because of the brand name. I just, it would be like, really? it'd be like buying a watch that was labeled Mr. Coffee. I just, it's kind of like I want them to stay in their own lane. So I don't know. The, the design, you're right, is actually kind of pleasant to the eye. It, it kind of reminds me of this brand from the 90s that I don't really even remember, Ventura. So uh, okay. Ventura made a bunch of titanium watches that were sort of very futuristic and, and simple. And uh, so, I mean, they're, they're actually very beautiful. Oh, just that name on the dial. I just, I couldn't, I couldn't unsee it every day when I look at my watch. <laughs> uh, yeah, it says somebody's asked, if Peter's put here, if Braun watches removes hairs, is that a bug or a feature? Well, well, uh, yeah, exactly. I mean, but you know, Timex is still the king of the of the hair stripping uh, on your wrist. Um, yeah, I I might actually I might actually just buy one of these just to do a review of it because I think you, you can get them off Amazon actually. Um, I think they they might all be imported from Germany, but I, I might just do a review of one just to just to really see what they're like. But mm. okay, next up. I forgot who this one is. Is this one of... Oh, this was one of yours, Mark. Yes, that is correct. That's one of mine. So this, this is my third pick. I had to bring up the watch I'm wearing right now. So this is a... I mean, it was kind of... I knew of them because uh, actually they're movement, I guess, manufacturer, if you will. But they also supply and modify uh, movements for a small brand called Ming. And this brand is called Schwarz Etienne. It's the watch I'm wearing right now. I have the one in blue. Um, and I got to learn a little bit more about them because of this collaboration with Kari. And one thing that's really interesting is they're not only a movement company, but they'll even make like fine parts like hair springs and things of that nature that most, 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 you know, most watch brands just don't have the capabilities of doing. And, you know, I, I have to say, I'm not a particular fan of their watches in general. Um, they they just don't speak to me personally, but I do respect, you know, kind of their watches and they can be had at very reasonable price points. Like the model I have is maybe a little bit more expensive, but the regular model is, is very affordable. I mean, we're talking a few thousand uh, thousand dollars. So nothing, it's not like this super crazy watch. And you know, we're talking a fully in-house manufacturer. It's, it's pretty incredible. Uh, again, price, price quality ratio is, is very high with these guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were, I'm yeah. I was going to say, Sam, we were talking about this brand a little bit on uh T and tickers earlier today when uh, when I spoke about JN Shapiro, he uses uh, Schwartz ETN movements as uh, as a base. Yep. And uh, so yeah, they make absolutely beautiful movements. And you know, as as Marco said, you know, for this one, he collabed with Voodlinen. So you know, <laughs> you're taking a a, a god and uh, and a pro and making a watch. So you know, it's it's obviously you know lovely. Yeah, I'm amazed that they make their own hairsprings because I I thought that I was one of the hardest things to actually produce, and that was why yeah. there is like a true American-made watch because the hairsprings and things like that are hard to without the proper machinery. Yeah, there's very few that I know that will still do. I think Breguet still does it. Um, they'll still make some of their hairsprings. I think uh, there's also Moser has their their kind of uh, their brand. Uh, I forget what it's called, but they they have kind of a brand that, that will make this stuff. But uh, yeah, there, there's very few that really have the capabilities of making these super. I mean, we're talking about like parts that are even smaller than like your fingernail, <laughs> for example. Right. So these are super fine, delicate parts. You really have to have a lot of expertise when uh, when making this. Yeah, absolutely. That engraving on the. It's very pleasing to the eye, isn't it? They're very like sort of a spider's web, but all all sort of you know congregating towards the um, the, yeah. the mainspring there. It's the, the spring there, the regulation. Yeah, it's really uh, and the the micro rotor as well. That's very pleasing to the eye. The way it's perfectly cut into the into the case there, and it's just missing the the uh, the gear train there, the wheels. Yeah, it looks. Uh, Looks awesome. Yeah, it's it's a really well designed. It's it's one of those that I think looks, you know, it, it looks equally as good from the back as it does from the front. I think this is a this is a great pick. And, and how, what what sort of price point did you say these were on? I wonder if it says it in the. Uh, so the these you can find these roughly in the mid twenties. I think they retailed for close to that as well. Um, which again, yeah, yeah. you know, considering you're getting a watch from what I feel is you know one of the biggest and 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 best independent watchmakers in the world. You know, with his his name is stamped both on the dial and on the on the movement itself. 
and, and his watches we're talking you know Kari at this point you're going to pay at least upwards of 120,000 uh you know on the secondary market because there's like a five year wait list now at this point uh, I, I mean, you get so much, uh, again, so much value, in my opinion, even if you were just to go for the base kind of model uh, that has this movement also, maybe not as well decorated or as finely finished, but we're talking about a single barrel micro order movement with an 80 hour power reserve. I mean, that's that's super impressive, in my opinion, right? To to even just achieve that is is amazing. And then you combine, you know, a really it, to me, it looks almost like you have a Kari dial with a Philip Dufour simplicity case and dial layout. And that's what I loved about it. You know, like it, it gives me like very much uh, two of the best watchmakers. And then you combine that with Schwarz Etienne's movement prowess. I, I think it's it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's it's a very distinctive looking, isn't it? It's yeah. very unique looking. Yeah. And the, the multi finishes on the multi multiple sort of different guilloche on the dial looks looks awesome. That was a great pick. Um, Patrick, this this was your one, this next one. Mm -hmm. So, as I said, this is kind of where I was going in more of the design than in the uh, the unknowns, even though there's probably a lot of people who don't know about Gronefeld. But uh, so it kind of, I you know, I kept it in the list because it's definitely not like the captain of Obscure, but it's definitely not, you know, mainstream. And, you know, the uh, the history of Gronefeld is pretty simple. There was an old brand that was resurrected by the grandchildren pretty much in almost early 2000. And uh, like Thea's. Yeah. And and uh, coincidentally, my next choice is going to do a similar story. But, you know, they just make really innovative designs. And really, just by seeing their presence, you can tell that they're really lovers of watchmaking. And that's that's what strikes me and you know they make a bunch of different models some are more plain they just came out with their new sports model which isn't my favorite but uh but i love the one that's pictured which is their one hertz because what they've pretty much done is they've taken their automatic movement and they've virtually turned it into a quartz and now it pretty much has a you know a striking seconds complication but they also supersized it and so, you know, it ticks just like a quartz, but it's actually a beautiful automatic movement. And I'm, if you push that button to say, see the back, you can, uh, you can pretty much see, you know, they make a gorgeous watch. And what's really fun about them is they use stainless steel bridges. And just, uh, just to throw something odd in there, you know, most people use softer metals just because it's easier to do and finish and polish, but you know, they use stainless steel. So it's just going to be super hardy and they, they're a Netherlandian uh, company. So they, they have those unique shapes to be the bell gables of a, of a rooftop kind of using the, uh, the grand Seiko philosophy of, you know, having the, the back of the dial be a little bit symbolic of something. So as I said, it's just a lot of style. I really love the brand and, I think as of this last year, they kind of did what uh, uh, Chopek did, and they they closed their books for at least a year because they were so so over over books. They they can't make any more production for us we commoners. So they're they're getting popular out there. Um. So is this is is this what it's called? So James Duffy says the deadbeat seconds. Is that yeah? It, it, what, is there a function to that? Or, or it's just you just do it for the just do it mean, for the hell of it. The, the function would be, you know, you actually know exactly what second it is. So I mean you definitely, you know, if you're timing something, I would much rather have a true second than sort of a sweeping who the hell knows where you are in the second. So, you know to call this watch functional though, not a bit. I mean, as I said, it, it looks like a dress watch with a rather sporty complication. But as I said, for me it's just more it's beautiful. So this in the center is the actual seconds, and then this is the timekeeping. Wow. Yes. I actually haven't heard of this brand before, but Marco, have you heard of, of them before? Yeah, yeah. We actually have uh, a Principia with a salmon dial uh, that I get to play with uh, for at least until it's sold. It's a beautiful watch. But yeah, I'm right there with you. I didn't love uh, what I call the Gronfeld Aquanaut. Um, their new sports mm -hmm. watch is not, uh, not my favorite, but yeah. This is, uh, I mean, they're a super high quality watchmaker. You kind of touched on all the points uh, that I would touch on, right? Which are, you know, the, the use of steel bridges, uh, which is 
again, not a very workable or malleable material. So it just goes to show you kind of the fin the level of finishing attention to detail that, you know, some of these independent watch brands will go to. And I mean, it's just, it's just a simple, classic, elegant watch. And I think that's more so what it's, it's meant to be, right? Maybe the one that you showed us is a little, I guess, more out there, but I mean, it showcases a really interesting complication and yeah, for sure. It's, it's also great because it helps, again, sync all your, your watches together, right? It's kind of the same function as almost a regulator clocks, right? So you can sync all, all your, basically your timekeeping devices together, which is useful, practical for sure. Yeah. As, as Marco said, I mean, most of their watches are very dress watch, normal watches. As I said, I definitely mm -hmm. picked the weirdo. The only one that's weirder is if you look down, Sam, uh, the second one in that little list, that's the brand new one they just released this year, which is pretty much my, it's, it's a little overcomplicated even for me, but it's the dream watch of it being a, a tantalum version, or at least they had one, it sold out. And, you know, it, it pretty much is a chronograph and uh, is it a perpetual or? No, so it's right. a chronograph with a, it actually just has a remontoir. So they're probably oh, most well known for their remontoir uh, model. And so they combine both a chronograph and a remontoir in this. Uh, so that basically you have, I mean, again, I've never seen those two complications ever mixed before. Never seen that, honestly. I don't think it's ever been done, which is you know, pretty unique. Uh, sorry, what's a remontoir? Is it is it this central it's, second? No, so it's basically like a constant force device. It's mostly for, like used uh, actually to power, interestingly enough, a deadbeat seconds. Mm -hmm. um, but the one that Gronfeld does uh, on the regular remontoir model is really interesting because it's an eight second remontoir. So they have this thing on the dial that fidgets kind of every eight seconds, um, which is pretty cool. But essentially what it does is it, uh, how do I say it? Like it's, it's a gear train that will supply a constant level of amplitude over over time right so the point is is like a, a watch you know when it's fully wound versus when it's minimally wound it will exert like different levels of power right so obviously mm -hmm. fully wound it will exert a lot more power than versus when it's minimally wound and so a remontoir will basically uh, allow for a constant delivery and supply of power over over basically the course of the power reserve of the watch so that it's more accurate that's yeah. that's Exactly. Pretty much, yeah, exactly. Accurate yeah. accuracy device. Your watch is going to keep yeah. as good enough time at the beginning of the wind as the end of the wind. Correct. Oh, yeah, wow. there's a couple of different ones. Like even it's kind of the same function as a chain and fuse, for example, that will also do uh, the same kind of idea. But yeah, that's that's just one of the constant force devices. But Sam, no click one. the uh, see the back on this one. This has pretty much the most amazing movement. Yeah, it's pretty incredible. Oh wow! <laughs> oh wow! Yeah, the depth, yeah. The, the level of finishing, is just, it, this watch is incredible. Yeah, you could get lost in this movement for forever. Yeah, they talk about longer longer movements, right? This is certainly, I think this is even on another level to them. Yeah, and it's, it's I mean, this is, it's amazing that they're sold out and it's 155,000 euro. Uh, in, incredible. Yeah, this is, this is, a, this is a brand new one on me. I was not, not familiar with this, this brand at all. Wow, that's really cool um awesome okay well we'll uh, i'll jump on to the the next one i wanted to call out this brand which is uh, people might know but this is weiss weiss watches and this is cameron weiss who's uh an american swiss trained american watchmaker uh, based in la he actually used to do a ton of social media stuff he was on that um he was on a podcast with uh i forget the name of the Oh yeah, that yeah. was a great podcast. I forget his name too. Yeah, yeah. Who who, who was actually a very famous U uh, car reviewer, YouTuber. Yeah, um, yeah. Somebody will, somebody will tell me he was on Joe Rogan and stuff. Somebody will, somebody will know it in the comments. But they actually um, ended up sort of folding that, I think, or maybe somebody else took it on. But it was good while it lasted. But yeah, he makes um, well, they they make the cases and stuff, I believe, in the US. But the movements are, I believe, um, modified ETA. But they do do a lot of additional work to it. But he's a, a small batch um, U.S. watchmaker. As you can see, they're quite competitively priced here. Um, I've seen one of these in person, and they're very impressive. The 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 way that the construction, the way that they, the um, the way that they feel. There's obviously a lot of time and effort has been put into the overall design of it, and. Um, yeah, a, a real great story. If you've not heard of the brand, definitely check it out. But um, 
I mean, guys, have you heard of Weiss watches before? Have you... Yeah, they're pretty. Yeah. I think they're pretty well known, at least you know by uh, kind of watch people, if you will. Actually, his story is really interesting. If I'm not mistaken, he started or learned kind of watchmaking uh, because he worked at Vacheron Constantin uh, for for quite a while, and that's kind of where he honed his skills. And yeah, again, for the for the price, I think the watch that you get is is really fantastic. Another one I think that uses. Uh, kind of unitas based movements but you know the design is just very like a field watch very very classic field watch aesthetic and yeah just great great looking overall yeah i, I remember because I, I i often used to look on here and i remember he had it used to have a lot more there used to be a lot more sort of different colors and stuff like that but um, I mean, I suppose you you can select. Maybe you just refine the website so you can select the different dials. But yeah, I went to a job interview once, and the guy who was interviewing me had this watch on, mm. and we ended up just talking about his watch for the, uh, for the rest <laughs> of the. Because uh, he he hadn't really he he didn't really know fully the backstory of it. He just really liked the look of it, which is un which I think is unusual, isn't it? Because it seems like one of those watches where you would you would kind of know the backstory and you would know a lot about it and then you would make the choice to buy, but he'd actually yeah. bought it just based on the, the fact that it looked cool. So Those are always the most fun when you bump into a random person who would talk about watches. I had a, uh, I had a patient this weekend who crushed his hand under some heavy object and uh, had to put him back together again, and he was wearing a Bell & Ross, and I was like, okay, if you're wearing a Bell & Ross, you must like watches because most people probably have never even heard of it. Right. And uh, so he was there and his father, he was kind of an old guy. So I don't know why his father came, but his father came anyway. And he was wearing a Breitling. So I'm like, hey, you guys are just a watch family. I love you. So, yeah, yeah definitely got to strike up some conversation. That's pretty cool. Wow. Well, and the watch was okay. Oh, yeah. Watch is fine. His fingers, not so much. Yeah. Oh. Forget his hand. The watch. It's all about the watch. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, no. Oh. Um, we have had a suggestion before I, before we delve into any more. We have had a couple of suggestions. One is, let me find it, is Lime Watches, which I've not heard of, but let's have a quick look here. Let's see if we can find it. Lime's Mechanical Watches. Okay, I've not heard of these before. I haven't either. I hope they don't spell it like the disease. L I, yeah, Lime's, L I M E S. So these are, I've not heard of it. So they're automatics. It's, okay. Okay. So I wonder if that's a, oh, so it's an ET, ETA 771 top grade. Oh, I've not heard of these actually before. So it's like a moon phase, which is not bad for $3,000. Some interesting. Kind of reminds me of uh, that Longines Heritage chronograph, the triple calendar. I don't know if you've seen yeah. that. Kind of, kind of same, same idea, same, same kind of look to it. Yeah, and, and this actually looks a little bit like a Hanhart watch. Yeah, that's not that's not dissimilar from a Hanhart, actually. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did I see one watch had a big date too? I saw something up there that looked like a double date. Yeah, oh, there. here you go. Actually, this is this is one thing that we we haven't we never talked about on the live stream. But I know whenever you watch Federico, he says that actually this is the worst complication or, or one of the trickiest complications to have on a watch because. The, if the two date wheels go out of sync, it's actually quite difficult to get them back in sync. But I've never owned a watch with yeah. this big date on it. Is that a thing? Have you seen? I've never owned one, but actually on Federico's website, he was selling uh, the GP Evo 3, which has the the uh, double date or the big date. And the one he was selling, yeah, it had two twos and one two is like definitely one notch below the other. And I was like, whoop, not that one. Well, so it, it must happen. Okay. Well, then let's dive back into our list. I think, Patrick, I, you picked this one. I mean, I think a lot of people might have heard of Moser, but was there a reason you... Uh, as I said, this is more for the design because I, I just okay, love okay. the streamliner. But, you know, for those who... <laughs> just sneak who, in. <laughs> yeah, that, for those... So, yeah, so most people probably have heard of this one. But, I mean, I guess there's still somewhat yeah. a smaller obscure brand so maybe it's new to some but you know same ideas with uh, the other watch i mentioned you know this is sort of a revitalization of a brand so the the moser pocket watch actually is very popular and oh. you know it's been around for a very very long time but those darn grandsons and great grandsons keep bringing watch brands back and you know they did for moser as well and you know i 
I'm a fan of a couple of their innovations, which I just think are so much fun. I love the Vanta Black, you know, the the one version that they made in collaboration with, uh, oh, I'm forgetting which, the Armory. Uh, they did with Brigade, with Brigade Numero or with Brigade Hands. That thing was yeah. absolutely gorgeous. But and, you can't uh, be touched, though, can it, the Vanta Black? I mean, if you touch it, it's ruined, isn't it? It can't uh, actually be handled. I would assume so. I mean, supposedly, if you look at it underneath a microscope, there's like a micro crystalline structure to it. So if you were to get, you know, dust or some particle in some of those crevices, I can only imagine how difficult it would be to get it out. But, you know, that's what creates that optical illusion of it being like 99.9% .9 black. And, you yeah. know, I said, for me, that's cool. And, you know, I know uh, one one brand just made a, a wannabe Vanta Black. I forget what it was, but theirs is like 99.5. And, you know, you could actually kind of tell a difference between the 0.5 and the 99.9 because .9, you look at it and it's very black, but it's definitely not Vanta Black. But Yeah, cause but... it's like the, the blackest black that has ever been made, isn't it? It absorbs like 100% of the light that's, that's on it. It doesn't refract any light, so you Absolutely. can't... And, and they have it in a box, don't they, where it looks like it's almost just like a dial hovering. Didn't they have it like... What yeah, well, they definitely usually put, you know, a double anti-reflective coat on there so that similar to, uh, you know, the, the oil-filled watches, you know, when in the right circumstance, you don't see any reflection. So it really just looks like you're just sucking into that black hole. So it's it's really pretty neat. But, you know, they also, of course, make their, their more uh, sport line and... You know, the Streamliner is sort of their new addition from a couple of years ago, and they've made a, a newer version that was the, the Perpetual Calendar, and I that's actually my favorite. And I just think it's just a really nice, cool watch. They they did it very subtly. The the one there on the top left is the, the Perpetual. And I just love the 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 stem at 4 o'clock and the, the little – the date window down there at 4, which I'm sure there's a bunch of people who hate because people hate asymmetric – date windows but i just like anything that makes a watch look different and you know from across the room i can see this watch and know what it is and know what it's not and to me that's what i just love about it so you know i think they're a great watch brand i think they're definitely trying to put out fun watches and i'm a big proponent of that always yeah yeah absolutely Okay, um, next back on, we've got a couple now that were sent in. And the first one is this Wellsboro. <laughs> um, now, this was sent in by good friend Steve, who sometimes joins us on the live stream, but he couldn't, he couldn't actually make it today. Uh, and the reason that he sent this in is it's, I think it's a new brand, but they actually use new old stock components. So this has got a Lamania uh 5100 or 5100 movement probably that's how it said and then this the cases are also from the 80s so <laughs> they actually are made from uh, old uh, new old stock components which i think is pretty it's quite quite an interesting thing to do really to create a new watch from old components but um yeah he sent this one in. i'd never heard of this before certainly interesting designs um i don't know what does <laughs> what's that what i don't know what do you think uh, of this one i mean my favorite part is just the ketchup and mustard so i mean the yeah. watch is pretty uh pretty standard normal it just kind of looks like a chronograph and as the world may know i'm not a very big fan of chronographs so it doesn't it doesn't do much for me but i first looked at the colors and i was like ew and then i was like ketchup mustard i'm like okay i like it so yeah does that mean you have to buy both of them? Oh, you'd have to. You'd probably even yeah. have to double fist. <laughs> with, your, with your ketchup and mustard, uh, like berries and cream. Uh, yeah, so I wonder if these are actually... Here's some. I wonder if these are actually made from vintage parts as well. Or oh, this one doesn't actually... Uh, this one doesn't actually say... Oh, yeah, made with a vintage movement from 1975. So it's kind of they've they've kind of recased a, a vintage movement. It doesn't say which one it is. I mean, you know, you could be on a delicate territory there, depending on which movement from the seventies, couldn't you? Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, real real interesting little brand there. I suppose for eight hundred and eighty dollars, it it's probably if if they're not absolutely pointing out what the movement is, then okay. And then next one I had was 
well, actually, it's uh, this was one of Stevens as well, but I agreed with it was was Vulcan, and I think that if once you get into watches, I think you know what who Vulcan is, but I don't think a lot of people know about Vulcan or know what the, what the history is there. Um, they're they're known for two things. They're known for their their cricket alarm, which is. Uh, an alarm that sounds like well, it doesn't really sound like a cricket. It's certainly highly amplified cricket that was originally designed, I believe, to be audible when diving because I think it it vibrates as well. Um, so they're known for their cricket alarm watch, which they still make today, and they're also known for they're called the President's Watch because apparently every president has owned a volcano. Now they say that in the material as if that that it's the choice of the president but i'm sure that they send one each time yeah so they can say hey there's a every every u.s president i think from it might actually say it here um in their history but um uh oh since harry s truman a u.s president has had a has had a volcano in their collection so um yeah quite uh quite an interesting brand I don't know if you can still do this, but they use sometimes they used to sell these on Joma Shop, but I don't know if they still do that now. But um, I, I think I've this never... one is newer, though, right? I think they just re-released this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they just yeah. re-released the 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 actual cricket. They yeah, took a right. holiday. I don't know how long they they holidayed, but yeah, it's a it's brand new re-release. Oh, right. really? So they they've like re-engineered the re-engineered it, did they? Or... Yeah, I don't this know if they've re-released this year. No, no, I think they still use kind of the original. Yeah, maybe old stock. I don't know if they're old stock. They must have uh, maybe designed. New... I, I'm not 100 percent sure on the story, but I know this was released actually this year. Yeah, I, I agreed. I'm not sure if they did anything new to it or if they just kind of brought it back. But they actually had it at the Wind Up Watch Fair, and uh, I didn't actually go over and look at it, but I was standing next to the table that was, and and I got to hear the cricket in action, and it's pretty loud. It was impressively loud. Yeah, because it was made to like vibrate and make sure that it moved while submerged underwater, didn't it? I think uh, actually, Mark's put here that uh, Vulcan send them to presidents, and then because of their value, they go to the Smithsonian or something. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Um, there was one. I, I, you know, I have been tempted. To, there was one that I was quite tempted on. I can't remember. Maybe they've switched it up now, but um, there's been a couple of times when I've when I've looked at uh, Vulcane. Um, their website looks is a bit weird, isn't it? If you, it's weird that you click on the things and then there's nothing there. Yeah, it sends you to their Instagram. That is a little odd. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's that's the end of the picks. I'm just seeing if anybody has mentioned any other brands to us. Somebody's put. Uh, I've never heard of this one. <laughs> i have not either i hope that's real <laughs> well well let's let's let me remove it from the thing and then we will uh we'll type it in and see what happens <laughs> well then, uh, i don't think mark wheeler is playing jokes on us so he's a good guy but uh but that's funny that's well in in the interim marco do you have anything to uh to promote or tell us about from uh from yeah. gray market uh, no, not too much. I mean, you know, it's just, uh, we may have, I guess, a big social media presence, but we're, I promise we're pretty, you know, casual, easy, down to earth people. I think that's the one thing that's like always shocking, right? Like even for me, uh, I guess when I first met Roman and, and, you know, saw, was in Pennsylvania and saw, uh, Roman and met, met kind of everybody for the first time. It's, you see like them on YouTube and you make this big idea up in your head of how they are and who they are and what have you. But we're just kind of regular, regular people, if you will. Yeah, I've been on a couple of live streams with Roman, and he's always been, yeah, he's, he's always been great to talk to. Uh, more importantly, has the um, the the race, the Formula One car turned up to the art car? Yeah, it has. It has. It's it's sitting at the office now. We're building up, or we're getting somebody to build us a mount, and it's going to be. Uh, it's pretty cool. I've seen like what you know what they have in store and. What they're going to do with it is is going to be pretty insane. Yeah, I think the last video I watched was that you did that great one on the new Patex and talking about the because I I wasn't in the camp of I wasn't in the camp of the fifty eight eleven 
being like a, a bit of a slight on the fact that the 5711 had gone. Because I, I distinctly remember that they said the 5711 wasn't going to be made in steel again. That's how I remembered it. So when they bought this white gold one, I was like, okay, well, that was... that was." But it, it really upset a lot of people as if they were thinking that the Patek had pulled the wool over their eyes or something. But I don't know where... Um, yeah, yeah I think I think you know what it is more so than anything else, right? It's like I, I think so. Terry said he didn't want to be remembered as like the Nautilus or fifty seven eleven company, and basically he just re releases the same watch, but this time in white gold. Yeah, it, which is like for for like more than double the retail price kind of thing, right? I think like I, I see what you're saying. It just kind of left a, a sour taste in people's mouth, and that okay, we knew it was we we're going to get another Nautilus, but it was going to be you know, maybe something a little different or they were going to do something maybe a bit of invent inventive, but they basically gave us the same watch with one millimeter case diameter, uh, the same movement, <laughs> you know, and uh, just in gold with, with almost triple the retail price. Yeah. Okay. Maybe, maybe I misremembered it then. Cause I was like, okay, well he definitely said no steel. And then no, no, he definitely said no steel, but he, I mean, it just, it didn't make sense considering like he said, I don't want to be the Nautilus yeah. company. And then, yeah, again, it just, it was, it's weird. Yeah. For me, that was the part is the not wanting to be the Nautilus company acting yeah. like they were going to go back to their roots of like pre Genta, but you know, they're just releasing another Genta and you know, they're going to still be the Nautilus company and or the Aquanaut company and, you know, only, only true watch aficionados will even care that they make chronographs and perpetuals and et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. I mean, even uh, I laugh, even the, the, what's it called? The rainbow Daytona Aquanaut was uh, another fun, funny release, you know? It's, uh, <laughs> oh. I know. Yeah. And I mean, then listen, I can't, I, I have to say, right. Like the new releases maybe weren't, you know, to my taste, but I think Paddock d did a lot of, you know, really good stuff this year. Like uh, the 5320 in Salmon, the 5172 also in Salmon. So uh, kind of the perpetual calendar and the, the chronograph. I loved yeah. also the inline perpetual calendar. I like the two new Calatravas, right? The uh, 5226, that kind mm -hmm. of pilot style Calatrava. Yeah, I really like those. The annual calendar GMT. Uh, like, I'm just not a fan of, you know, kind of this batch of releases, if you will. It's just, uh, I don't know. There's nothing like uh, that, like, whoa, you know, other than the maybe the 5935. Yeah, yeah. I'm amazed that we, we, we were, when we were on T and Ticker's live stream before, we were going through the Philips catalog and there was a white gold Aquanaut on there with a, a guide price of 80,000 to 120,000. Um, Swiss francs. I was thinking, wow, that's like because the Aquanaut used to be the ob obtainium one for Patek, couldn't it? it? It was, I mean, I remember reviewing one back years ago, and I'm sure it was in the like 15 or 20 thousand dollar range. It might oh, have been it was a even less than that. At one point, Man. it was even less than that, right? Like, I think even Federico has talked about this in the past in a video where, like, he because he used to work at, at Vempe, right? And Vempe is a a paddock authorized dealer and he used to say we used to laugh at the aquanaut you know nobody used to buy it. it was the lowest end paddock it had the cheapest you know kind of movement lowest end movement didn't even have hacking seconds and you know the, the case was probably the least complicated for paddock to make and now you know it's arguably their most popular watch yeah that's that's going to be a that's a big watch yeah yeah well this one's going to be 300 to 600,000 so uh, yeah it's going to be but you know, I mean, that's just a rare game. one, right? It's an advanced research limited to only a couple hundred pieces. So, yeah. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Well, that's been fantastic. Marco, thank you so much for joining us. It was a pleasure having you on. Really Likewise. appreciate thank it. Thank you for having me. And uh, Patrick, as always, thank you so much for uh, for joining us. And and yeah, guys, thank you so much for being so active in the comments. That was awesome. Really appreciate all the suggestions. I hope you enjoyed our picks there. And we'll see you on Sunday for the Sunday social. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye, everybody.